Okay. So now we are going to study the sensory pathways of the spinal cord. Now, as we said, what are the senses or the impulses that are carried? We have pain, touch, temperature, pressure, vibration, proprioception, etc. Now, if you look into the spinal cord, I'm just showing you a rough diagram of spinal cord. Okay. This is the anterior horn of the spinal cord. These are the posterior horn, or you can say posterior column of the spinal cord. Okay. The lateral and the anterior column are basically what happened. They are responsible for the motor tracts. That is all the motor, motor tracts from the cerebral hemisphere, cerebra, cerebrum, are going to come to the lateral as well as to the anterior horn. Whereas the sensory tracts basically arise from the posterior column or known as the dorsal column of the spinal cord. Okay. So what is happening? Posterior sensory tracts are arising from the dorsal column or the posterior column of the spinal tract, spinal cord. Clear with this? Yes. Okay. Now let us see what are the different sensory tracts. So there are two different kinds of sensory tract. Okay. One sensory tract is known as dorsal column. Another sensory tract is known as spinothalamic tract. Again, spinothalamic tract is divided into, into anterior, spinothalamic, and lateral. Forget about that. Just remember there are two uh, sensory tracts. Now, what is the need for these two sensory tracts? Because both of them actually carry different sensation. For example, the dorsal column is basically responsible for carrying the sensation of touch, okay. carrying the sensation of touch, pressure vibration and proprioception whereas the spinothalamic tract is responsible for carrying the sensation of pain crude touch not fine touch this is fine touch here fine touch here crude touch as well as temperature so that is why because the sensation are different that is why we have this separate sensory tracts now, dorsal column is heavily myelinated. It is extremely fast. It is like a, you know, like an express way. Extremely fast. Compared to the dorsal column, the spinothalamic is less, has less speed. But still, again, you know, if, if, if somebody is inflicting a pain on you, it is if a mosquito is biting immediately, or if you, if you are touching a hot or a cold surface, immediately you will be able to find. Right? But your brain is more sensitive to fine touch, pressure, vibration, and proprioception. The reason is because the dorsal column is extremely myelinated as compared, more myelinated as compared to the spinothalamic tract. So we are clear. Dorsal column carries the fine touch, pressure, vibration, proprioception, spinothalamic tract carry pain, crude touch, and temperature. Okay. So which is better actually? No, I'm not saying which is better, which is high speed. Dorsal column. Okay. Because it is heavily myelinated. Now what happens is that basically all the sensory pathway, they will carry the information from that particular impulse. For example, your hand here, it will carry the information from your hand to the spinal cord and from the spinal cord, it will carry to the cerebrum, cerebral cortex. This is the usual pathway. Okay. Now let us study in detail. Understood this? How they are carrying? Yes. Okay. So yeah. usually what happens, the right side of the impulse sensory, right side, any kind of sensory impulse on the right side, it will be received and perceived by the left brain. Whereas vice versa, any kind of pain sensation on the left side will be received and perceived by the right side of the brain. Okay, so if I'm having, if a mosquito is biting me on my left hand, it, this impulse will be taken to my spinal cord and after that it will go up and ultimately reach the right side of my brain. Okay, this is the usual thing. Now, how does it reach? Why does it reach the right side? That means somewhere it is crossing over, right? So what happens is that any kind of sensation. So I'm having this in my hand. And somebody is touching me very finely, probably with a feather or something or with a thread or say 
there is a sense of vibration here. Okay, I'm talking about the dorsal column. So what happens is that first neuron is going to take it. This impulse will be carried by first neuron and it will be taken to the spinal cord. Where? To the dorsal column of the spinal cord, isn't it? And okay, this is an absolutely wrong picture of the spinal cord. Please excuse me for this. Okay, this is to an extent, okay. So this is the dorsal column of the spinal cord it is taking. Clear? Yes. Okay, so there are some thing known as first order neuron, second order neuron, third order neuron. So the impulse from the site of origin up to the spinal cord is known as first order neuron. From the spinal cord, it will be received, you know, relay game, relay race, like in school we used to play, there will be four people. One person will transfer the, like something like, you know, a box or a paper to another person. They will take and they will transfer like that. Okay, like a relay race. So what is happening? First, one impulse is being transferred from the hand, any kind of vibration to the spinal cord. That is known as the first order neuron. From the spinal cord, there will be another neuron. That is another neuron is going to receive this impulse and it is going to take up along the spinal cord. It will go up, up, up along the spinal cord. It will reach the brain stem that is medulla. When it reaches the brain stem, now it will cross the midline. After crossing the midline, now it is going to go to, see initially it started from the right side, now it is going to the left side and this will be perceived by the left side of the brain. So what is happening? First is that one impulse is generated where? At any side, say in the hand on the right side. And this impulse is being carried up to the spinal cord. From the spinal cord, nice and everything good, smooth. It is going up to the medulla. At the level of medulla, it is crossing over. Also, it is known as decussation. Crossing over, decussation, both are same words. So it crosses over and then goes to the opposite side. And that is the reason where it is crossing at the level of medulla. And then it will be perceived by the left brain. That is the reason any kind of sensation on the left side is perceived by the opposite side brain. Any kind of sensation on the right side will be perceived by the left side of the brain. Are we clear with this? Yes. 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 How many neurons are involved here? This is the first order neuron from spinal cord up to the medulla, second order neuron from medulla to the cerebrum, third order neuron. So basically there are first order, second order, third order neuron in case of a dorsal column, in case of a sensory tract, dorsal pathway known as dorsal column or posterior column. Okay, this is not for all the sensation. This is in case of dorsal column, which carries the temperature, pe pressure, fine touch, vibration, proprioception. Are we clear, everybody? Yes. This is okay. I just have one question. Mm -hmm. um, is it the second order neuron or the third order neuron that would cross the midline? First, second order neuron. Mm -hmm. what happens is it not crossing the midline no it will go up to the medulla and then from the medulla it will cross yes yes it will cross and then from the medulla itself a new neuron is going to start so it is crossing okay okay so now tell me so everybody is clear with this okay now if there is any lesion Okay, I'm, I'm making a lesion at the level of the spinal cord. So what will happen then? There will be loss of sensation on the same side or the opposite side. Same side. Same yes, side. exactly. Because see, why there will be loss of sensation on the same side? Because this is arising, see, up to in this, at the level of the spinal cord, the dorsal column is on the same side itself. That is right side impulse is arising and it is remaining on the right side itself. So whenever there is any lesion at the level of the spinal cord, what will happen? It will cause ipsilateral loss of 
sensation. Which sensation? Fine touch, pressure, vibration, proprioception. Clear? Yes. Okay. So everybody is clear with this? Yes. Okay. Now this is about the uh, dorsal pathway. Now let us study the spinothalamic pathway. Spinothalamic pathway, it is responsible for carrying the sensation of pain, crude touch and temperature. So pain, touch and temperature, crude touch and temperature. In this spinothalamic pathway, again, so we have this, you know, a hand. We have the spinal cord here. Very bad picture. Uh, we have the medulla here. And then we have the cerebral cortex. Okay. So what is happening? Any kind of pain, then any kind of crude touch and temperature. So suppose somebody has, uh, you know, just touched a hot cup of tea.